Welcome back, viewers. Still here with Councillor Hamilton. And Councillor Hamilton, I realized that you really wanted to comment on this video. You know, it's a very interesting one. It has to do with foods and the food industry of the future. So let's look at the video. And when we come back, we'll speak to you know, different issues having to do with it. I've got three predictions. One is that in the next 10 years, the dairy industry as we know it today, where cows produce milk, will be gone. It will be plant-based alternative milks, uh, or milks made by precision fermentation. The second prediction is that also within 10 years, the meat industry will be half either plant-based foods or foods derived from what's called cellular agriculture. And the third is that within 10 years again, half of the world's fish will be produced in factories. We already have the products. All we need is the scale, the money, and the will. Well, isn't that interesting? Um, I also, I had my own, my own prediction, though, you know, but it's really if we as a people are willing to take advantage of it. I feel that um, algae, seaweed, and so on will also play a role in the foods that we eat a lot more because there are like literally hundreds of different algaes or hunt like all right spirulina is an algae right and a lot of times we hear people talking about it and then they realize that it's like what is inside your pool when you don't clean the pool right that's what spirulina is an algae and it's very it has a higher protein content than um I think that's a higher protein content than beef and a lot of other meats, right? And in the end, probably with the population that we have, we might very well have to look at using it to feed the world, right? But these other ones that they just mentioned, I'm, I'm just being introduced to some of these concepts about growing fish in a test tube and growing the other meats in a test tube. That's a comment. Um, <clears throat> You know, I'm surprised at, at where the world is shifting now. But one thing that never surprised me is the Jamaican people. Anything will have some big word and have to be very Ill, um, illustrated and, and complex for us to understand we're not eating it. You give somebody food and it don't look right, a Jamaican person is what that? <laughs> if it's something where they can't recognize, <laughs> they're not bothering with it. <laughs> no, the thing is, what that person is speaking about, mm -hmm. what he is expecting in the next 10 years, is a lot of food based with science to produce. Jamaican people don't trust whole heap science because as we believe, Food is supposed to be natural. Food so is supposed to be natural, but also things that are developed in a lab, they may be an alternative they agenda. Rastaman, Rastaman drink, drink him, have him spirulina juice. No, 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 so no, on. that's different. If the algae <laughs> is produced naturally, <laughs> it's uh, one thing. But when you're talking about <laughs> producing plant-based food mm -hmm. to feed billions, that is lab-based food and mm -hmm. lab technology. Okay. Now, the thing is, for example... It's a fish not for dinner test tube. No, well, no. When, it, <laughs> when, when he spoke about fishes in lab, I mean, most freshwater fish, you know, um, they, they, they probably do something to increase the yield or the... the, the, the yeah, but that's just normal fermentation. breeding. All right. Mm -hmm. But when you're talking about developing a plant or food-based culture in a test tube on a mass scale, mm -hmm. you're really saying to somebody you don't know what you're eating. Right. Uh, you know, I see people say that they're developing chicken meat in test tubes. Now, if that is gone on a large scale, what are you just eating? Just enough test tube. And put, not only that, <laughs> but those growth hormones that they put in the food, ah. after you digest it, will that growth hormone continue to act with your body? Mm. And you might all see yourself growing different limbs, <laughs> unwanted limbs, and say it affects your child. Mm -hmm. How will your child grow? You know, so there's a lot of unknown with that. Um, I don't see that a lot of questions. happening to the Jamaican people in the next 10 years. Um, 
What, You're not excited about that. No, one. what I do see happening here, mm -hmm. you spoke about milk. Mm -hmm. You have almond milk. Yes. yes. You have oat milk. Mm -hmm. You even have hemp milk. Yeah. And no, but that more natural, that, that's natural. No, it should be natural. Do mm -hmm. we know how they produce it? No, well, what do we No, do? no, you don't know? No, but wait, 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 no. <laughs> let me come in. All right. I've watched documentaries, and what came out of it was that a lot of the times, these farmers of a surplus of, for example, almond then, or almond, as we would call it in Jamaica, and they were, they, they run the gambit of different products that can come out of it, right? It's like the same thing with breadfruit at one time, when we wanted to ask the question, Apart from just roast or boiled breadfruit, what else can we make out of it? So you end up with breadfruit pudding, you end up with breadfruit flakes, and things like that, right? When George William Carver, George William or George Washington Carver, right? Don't, don't beat me up if I get the name wrong. But he was, the fa was referred to as the father of um, food food botany or food culturing or whatever, because what he developed with peanut, when he came up with peanut butter. And, and sweet potato. And sweet, and sweet potato, I'm correct. Yeah. But he was able to run the full gambit of things that can be produced as food from a single product. That at one time, peanut was only eaten, you know, shell it, you know, roast it, shell it, and eat it. That was the only thing you could do with peanut. Or right? animal feed animal feed, right? But when he realized that there was an excess amount, it caused the price of it to drop. It caused a lot of black people who were doing like sharecropping and so on, were losing, you know, losing everything whenever the price of peanut um, fell. He realized that he had to look about creating opportunity by creating different products for it so as to increase the demand for peanut. Right? So I'm saying that almond into a milk or any other of these, you know, food products, plant-based products into a milk is easily much more palatable as a concept than, than some of the other things. My question to you is, but not eating a fish you out of came out and said that it's natural. But it's natural. Do you know the process that they convert an almond into milk? Yeah, they probably just squeeze it. No, you're guessing or you're no. <laughs> don't guess. No, Let's I don't speak know. back to us. Okay. <laughs> so it should be natural mm -hmm. if they're using just almond and water. Yeah. But if it is, they're using other things to, 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 to make it solid, to make it emulsify, to make it whatever, yeah. right. then we'd have a problem. Once the process can be ascertained mm -hmm. and determined with accuracy, accuracy and precision that is 100% natural. Sure. Yes, we'll have a bind with it because there's a lot of health conscious persons, you know, and, and, and persons in Jamaica are looking for healthy options. So that I see. But like you said, when you're developing fish meat. <laughs> in the test tube. In the test tube. No. Because remember, you know, when you go to the supermarket, we all need to be vigilant, especially with foreign foods. And we need to look at the label to see if it have a warning of GMO, genetically modified organisms, mm -hmm. or GMF, genetically modified food. No. There is a danger with that when you go into a lab and you specifically develop a chicken not to grow any feather so it can take um, a longer time or it has an enhanced breast or give you more poundage that at the end of the day still have chemical reactions with your body. Now, Jamaican people, and I'm speaking for myself as a 100% Jamaican, we're not buying into that. <laughs> So when them come in with this test tube thing and grow fish, first thing, we don't know the taste. <laughs> you understand me? A well, lot of Jamaica some supermarket A lot tasting. of Jamaica don't even eat freshwater fish. <laughs> if I know fish, then and papa that no. <laughs> if we go to the supermarket and we say mutton, 
And we don't say local goat. We're not buying it. <laughs> so when this thing, as a matter of fact, even if they build a, a GMO or a GMF factory in Jamaica, hell and powder house to that. <laughs> hell and powder house. All but right. it is something we're trending, nevertheless. A lot of things that are popular now, we Jamaicans never think it will catch on. John. And with the next generation, it is here. So let us brace for that. <laughs> All right. And, and, you're, and not in, you're not in the front of the line for that. I think we need to promote backyard gardening where persons can have their own tomato, their own lettuce, their right. own cabbage, their right. own right. peas. Producers are giving us the talk. We're going, to, we're going to go for a break. We'll be right back, viewers. Hi, viewers. My name is Ian Bennett, and I'm the host of In the Hot Seat. If you like the video you just saw and would like to see more of the same type of video, please click the subscribe button and the like button as we produce videos every Wednesday. Thank you.